great God in heaven. We come to you at this hour on sad occasion. Because we know that you thou art God and there is no other. And only you can soothe our pain at this time. Father God in heaven, all of us at one time in life have dropped the ball. All of us, Heavenly Father, have lost the ball that we tried to live in this life. But we ask you, God Almighty, to forgive us. Yes, Lord. Forgive us that we may do better things in life than we've done in the past. Yes. May you continue to teach us through the Holy Spirit yes. to guide us and make the right decision in life. Yes. May we look at our lives and see our relationship with you. Yes. And wonder, Heavenly Father, our condition. Yes, yes. The deceased Heavenly Father is gone. Yes. All that he done and all that he didn't do will be no more. Yes. But we thank you for this family, yes. your blessing upon them, all that that bloodline touches. Yes. Heavenly Father, we know that we all have gone and we all know have known the pain of death. Somehow, somewhere, we have experienced it as our, ourselves. But God Almighty, we pray that our relationship with you change. Change for the better. And to keep us, God Almighty, in the heart of your hand. So God Almighty, you know all about us. You know every step that we take. You even know the thoughts of our heart. So God Almighty, may you bless us. May you be with us. Be with this family that they will get through this incident. So go with us, God Almighty, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> New Old Testament reading will come from Isaiah, chapters 57, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 57, chapter 50, Isaiah 57, chapter, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth to his heart. 
and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. The New Testament verses are John chapters 14, verses 1 and 2. John 14, verses 1 and 2. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I believe the program is said a celebration of life. Amen. 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 Celebration. So what that's what we're going to celebrate. Amen. Amen. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. And I love to praise him. And I love to praise him.
as uh, it's reflections, and the family is asking that anyone that wants to, that has a reflection on this great, that you limit it to two minutes, please. Or anyone that wants to express any heartfelt endorsement, now is your time. Every time I come in, I come in and see how we chat and talk. And the 
whatever together and always he was a true friend and a nice guy.
And we're grateful to God because we serve a good God. He's worthy of our praise. And even in these moments and these times, God is still good. And we just thank him so much for sending to us his only begotten son. Amen. That he would die in our state. He would raise himself from the grave and have all power to live forever. Amen. We have hope in this world now through Jesus the Christ. And so we're grateful and we're thankful uh, for the mercy and the grace of God. Because I promise you, it's not because we were so good last night that we got up this morning. It wasn't that we planned it out perfectly. It was not that we understood what would go on. But it was through God's grace and mercy that he touched us this morning. Woke us up out of our bed to sleep. I promise you, it was not the alarm clock. The TV was not too loud. It was not the noise that was made that woke you up this morning. Amen. But we know that it was the mercy of God that reached out, looked beyond our faults, looked over the things that we messed up. God touched us this morning and said, try it again. Amen. And we're grateful for God. We're grateful for God. And truly, we believe that God is not a God of a second chance, but he's a God of another chance. Amen. We messed the second chance up a long time ago. Amen. God has given us another chance. And we're so grateful and thankful for that. Amen. And, and we're just grateful for the great family. We thank them. Uh, for allowing us to be a part of this celebration. We are just so grateful and thankful for this family. We're truly praying for uh, the great family. We know that God understands it all. And the best that we can do for you is put you in the hands of the Lord. Take you to the cross of Christ and let him cover you in his precious blood because he has all powers, all answers, and he understands all things. And so uh, we're just so thankful that God allowed uh, Mr. Alfred Gray to come our way. Uh, we are better because of him. Uh, as I heard uh, some say earlier, Mr. Alfred was just cool. Yeah. Uh, amen, somebody. He, he moved at his own pace. Yeah. Uh, amen, somebody. He understood what he was doing. Yeah. And so we thank God for him. We thank him for what he has done. And you just look around, so many people he has touched their lives. Uh, and I think they need to retire his van. Amen, somebody. Because ain't nobody going to drive that van. Y'all going to mistreat it. Don't want to mistreat it. Man. Amen. But we, we, we just thank God for uh, for Mr. Alfred. Amen. Uh, and I, I'm not going to uh, worry your patience too long. Uh, ain't nobody say amen. And I'm not going to worry your patience too long. But as it has been said, Mr. Alfred has lived his life. Uh, he has taken every step that God said that he would take. He didn't come up one step short, nor did he go one step too far. It was predestined in the mind of God, the life that he would live. And Mr. Alfred had preached his own funeral. He sung his own song. He told his own story. And so there's nothing that I could say at this moment that will help Mr. Alfred. And there's nothing that I could say that will hurt him. But yet we know he's resting in the hands of a just God. But the word of God is alive. And it's alive for those that are alive. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two edged sword. And so I'm just letting you know I'm coming today to preach to the living. Is that all right? Amen. I won't, I won't preach long, but I'm going to preach to the living. Can, can we do that? Is that all right? Uh, because it's important for us to understand that we have a destiny. This world is not our home. We just pass it. There is a place waiting on us that God himself has reserved just for you and I. Yes. Amen, somebody. And so, but it's going to determine something. The place is reserved, but it's conditional. It's not automatically given to either one of us, but it's a condition to the place. And the condition is that we must live a life on this side of the world 
that's pleasing and acceptable to Christ. Not only should we live a life pleasing and acceptable to Christ, but we must live a life in Christ. And by living in Christ, God promised us that he would give us a place of rest. Is that all right? Yeah. Just for a, a few moments, I want to read from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Uh, I'll read verse 6 and verse uh, number 7. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'll read verses 6 and verse 7. The apostle Paul said this to the young Timothy. He said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. In verse 7, Paul says to Timothy, we brought nothing into this world. Did y'all hear that? And he said, it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it. But subject this morning, nothing in and nothing out. Nothing in and nothing out. Well, to understand it a little bit, just a little context, Paul has left Timothy in Ephesus. He told Timothy to do the work of the evangelist in the church at Ephesus. But Paul, realizing his position in life, Paul realizes that at this particular point, I've got older now. I'm sick, I'm in jail, and he realized that I may not come to see you, Timothy. Because Paul recognized that life, my life may end, Timothy, before I be able to arrive back to Ephesus. And so, Timothy, I want to give you some, some encouragement. Timothy, I want to give you some words. Timothy, I want to help you to understand some stuff. And what I like about Paul's position is, when he writes to Timothy, he's not just writing a biblical stance to Timothy, but he's writing a practical place uh, to Timothy because Paul is writing also from his own personal experience. Paul is as if he's the parent and Timothy is the child. And he's telling Timothy, I have lived in this world, Timothy. I've been up in this world. I've been on the wheel of life in this world and I've been down. Paul said, Timothy, I've had in this world. And Timothy, I've been without saving that. But one thing I learned is I learned how to abase myself to be content in Christ. Because if you learn this early, Timothy, it'll keep you from some trouble later on in life. Y'all just, just stay here. See, some of the best wisdom you can get is when somebody has been down the road to get it. You get down the road, they catch you at the top of the road and say, listen to me if you will. You can save yourself some trouble if you don't go down that road because I've already been there and I've done that. And I'm just telling you, if you listen to me, it will help you. Yeah, I'm, I told y'all, I'm trying not to preach on, but y'all got to get this now. Uh, y'all got to get this. So Paul is writing to Timothy from a position of, I, I've been there. I'm older now. I don't see it like you see it, Timothy. Your eyes are young, Timothy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your mind is young, Timothy. Your, your, your desires are young, Timothy. Your wants are young, Timothy. But Timothy, don't get caught up in that young stuff. Say amen when you can. Because you need to understand what I've learned, Timothy. I've learned that you don't bring anything in this world. And because I'm at the door out of the world, I found out, Timothy, you don't take nothing. Can't take nothing out of it. But it is not that Paul is saying, Timothy, don't get anything. He's not saying, Timothy, while you're in the world, don't seek after nothing while you're in the world. He's not saying, Timothy, while you're in the world, you know, just act like you don't see anything. But he actually gives him what it is for him to get while he's over here. Paul says, Timothy, if you want to get anything out of the world, you need to get some godliness. If you want to get something out of the world, Timothy, get some contentment. Amen, somebody. Now let me help you with what he means by contentment in the text. 
What Paul is telling Timothy, if you want to be content, you need something that's sufficient. Say amen when you can. If you're going to be content in this world, you need something that sticks with you. If you're going to be content in this world, you need something you can trust. If you're going to be content in this world, you need something you can stand on that won't ever shake. If you're going to be content in this world, you're going to need somebody you can depend on. Sometimes when you don't have anybody else to depend on, you're going to need somebody, Timothy, in this world that won't leave you in hard times. You're going to need somebody, and if you won't ever be content and have something sufficient in this world, you're going to have to find it in something that's not in the world. Say amen when you can. So all uh, understanding and instruction in Timothy is if you get Christ, you don't have to worry about being discontent in this world. Because when you got Jesus, you got sufficient to somebody to help the ride. Yeah. When you get Jesus, you got what you need. When you get Jesus, you got to walk, you got somebody that'll stand with you, stand for you, help you out in your trouble time. You got somebody that'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You got somebody when you get Jesus in your life. You got somebody that will not only live with you, but he'll die with you. Just whatever you give, God will give it back to you. 
Whatever you give in your life, it give you a better life. If you give in your heart, it give you a better heart. If you give in your feet, it will make you walk better. If you give in your hands, it will make them do better. If you give God your body, it will make it a better body. Whatever you give it, I don't care how broken it is, if you give it to him, he'll it. You got a problem, give it to him. He'll take care of it. As a matter of fact, I need you to go home and research this if you will. One word in the Bible, one word that's not in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, is problem. Now, one of them, you'll never read a text in the Bible with the word problem in it. And the reason why I didn't call it, you define problem, you do, it is something difficult to deal with. Amen. The Bible is God's book. Amen. You don't have problems. Amen. So whatever you got, just bring it to us. There's no problem to God, because God can fix it all. Yeah, just bring it to him. Just bring it to him. Just get up and give it to him. Just bring it to him. You ain't got to know this, and you ain't got to know that. You ain't got to know the Bible inside and out. Give it to him. I promise you, he'll take care. Praise this, and I'm telling you, God is able. Whatever's broke, give it to him. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Abbott had lived his life, yeah. and now he's resting in the bosom yeah. of a just God. Yeah. But it's up to you and I both yeah. to gain godliness yeah. and contentment. Yeah. May God bless you and keep you. Yeah. It's our prayer. Yeah. We love you and we'll always be friends.
the great family has truly been blessed. Not only because you're here today to show them your love, your support, and your kindness, but because you've been kind to them during these hours of bereavement. Your phone calls, your visits, all of your gestures of love have shown this family that love is not what it says, but what it does. In the days ahead, this family will still need your kindness and your support. We know that plenty of the friends and family members are supporting us via live stream. The family does fear your support, and I stand today to say thank you collectively, just in case they're not able to say thank you individually. Amen? Amen. We would like to honor and point out a special crew that's here today. And that's the Marathon Morning Crew. Would you please stand? <laughs> marathon, please stand. The Morning Crew at Marathon, please stand. because this love, I've been told, has lifted our staff brother, Mr. Finch Brother. Amen. 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 My dad said it best, what affects you and your family affects the Stevens Lee family as well. Amen. 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 Always remember, your joy will come in the morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 We thank God for the message that was driven on today. And let us thank God for the messenger. Please join me in giving Brother Tony Perry Sr. We thank God for Brother Jerome Travis. Let's give him a round We thank God for Brother Reggie Oxford. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. At this time, we ask the ministers of the gospel to do so. 